Hello, everyone, and welcome to this, our first ever Loyola podcast. Uh, my name's Michael O'Keefe. I am the Director of College and Community Engagement here at Loyola. And joining me in the co-host chair uh, is, well, some describe as the funniest man at Loyola College, uh, Mitch Hellier. Hello, Mitch. Hey, sir. Hello. What's up? That's quite an intro. I, <laughs> I thank you for that. No worries. I think, I think you hey, undersold uh, me a bit. I think I'm funnier than <laughs> just loyal. Well, just loyal. Well, maybe the uh, the people listening or watching this can uh, can let us know what they think. Look, uh, you and I have had this idea for about oh, nearly a year now. We uh, yeah. it was actually this time last year we were we were in America together on an arts tour, and um, we said let's do a podcast together. And we were all ready to go to do it in our recording studio uh, here at Loyola. And COVID. Yeah, that that came up completely threw us kind of all out of everything. And it was really, I was really looking forward to it. Probably interviewing Favrin probably was one of the four things I was looking forward to the most this year. But yeah. Yeah, well, look, and and I think we'll certainly come back to um, to having Mr. Favrin as one of our guests uh, when we get back to school. But yes, we're in the, the land of uh, coronavirus and uh, you're at home. Uh, I'm yep. uh I'm actually at work because part of uh, Mr. Favrin's team, we're keeping some staff here. Um, but how how's it been for you? You've just come off school holidays. You've had a week of classes. Tell me tell me what's going yeah. on for you. Um, it's it's kind of, it's been really really good. I think that uh, the whole system that we've been using has been really easy and and simple to learn with. Um, of course, I think that all subjects are gonna be a little bit different in terms of how they're taught with this. Some will be taught better than others, but um, I think it gives a lot of kids a lot of freedom with it and um, also kind of gives them a little bit of independence so they can still do the work, but they can do it kind of by themselves. And I think that it also completely contrasting that also helps with a lot of cooperation because, uh, you know, you're reaching out to more people that maybe you couldn't or haven't before or in class uh, to get, kind of help and get the most out of every lesson. Because, of course, all our classes are um, on uh, MS Teams. And so uh, I, I know I, I teach you for theatre and today I was meeting you guys halfway through the lesson to give you some time to, to do some work. And I noticed that you guys were already meeting before I even got there, which probably wouldn't have happened in a classroom oh yeah no we, we <laughs> especially theater we would have been far too distracted um <laughs> but yeah no i think that's again again that's the independence we get uh all that time to kind of plan out what we're gonna do and get everything set into motion for something like theater and uh yeah it's it's really really good is is it's been a very smooth transition well we don't know when uh you guys will be back but we are certainly missing you here uh on campus we only have about 10 students or so each day coming in and they're only in one part of the school so it's a little bit weird with with no students and minimal staff here but uh yeah we are we are looking forward to having you back now what have you been doing? Um, because you can't go out and all those sort of things. Have you been uh, kicking back, watching uh, sort of TV or playing on your computer? What have you been doing personally yeah. outside um, of school work? Uh, been doing a lot of walks, been keeping active. Um, I've been benching a couple of things. I started watching The Witcher on Netflix and I've been playing a lot of uh, Animal Crossing and I'm trying to catch up with uh, Ozark as well right oh wow you got yeah. a full list now i ask you i ask you that <laughs> sorry as well as doing homework as well as doing yes of homework. course of that's course. very important that's uh, that we should put a disclaimer down the bottom for that uh, yes <laughs> now we uh, i ask that because we've got a special guest that we're about to dial in uh you know him better than i do but certainly uh, uh jack bonsar is all all things Movies. film and television tell us a little bit about about Jack, because of course we were in America together, and between you and Jack, you seem to know every film that was ever <laughs> made. Ever made, yeah. Um, 
I've known Jack for quite a while now. Uh, he's he's a great bloke, and he's just he's an encyclopedia of movies. I think that he could you could show him a snippet of one film for like three seconds and he'd be able to name the director what year it came out and the name of the movie and how much it grossed. He's it's really, I'm really envious on that behalf. Um, he's just got such a great knowledge and, and really good taste in films and quality. And it's good to have someone that you can, uh, talk to like that, uh, about stuff like that. All right. We're going to be back very shortly with Jack Bonsart. Stay tuned. All right. Cool. So we are joined here now by Mr. Jack Bonzer. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mitchell. Hello, Mr. O'Keefe. So, uh, Jack, how have you uh, have you been over these past few trying weeks? Well, it's been very interesting trying to conform to this new sort of learning lifestyle. However, it is... Of, like everything, it's got its pros and cons. It's definitely nicer the fact that I can start doing my English work while still in bed and not even have to move, which is definitely a benefit. <laughs> of course, having to adjust is an interesting thing because you can't even. Because I'm someone that uh, really likes to be able to talk one on one with the teacher, and now it's a little harder now that um, I would have to ask in front of like the whole class, and that's like I try to avoid if I can. But other than that, I'd say it's coming along pretty well so far. Yeah, no, I, I get what you mean. One of my goals for the year was to get more feedback from teachers directly, and now it's just like, oh, can't do any of that. <laughs> yeah, just wait um, thirty minutes. All right. For an year. You're lucky. <laughs> all right. So, Jack, the reason we have you here on the podcast, we're in isolation. We're going to need some good movies and TV to watch. Um, what are your highest recommendations that we can find on stuff like Netflix? Well, uh, in terms of stuff that I've watched semi-recently, um, if you're into stuff like anime or animation, uh, there's no better place to look than Studio Ghibli. They've made some of the best films ever made, in my opinion. But uh, recently they've added like almost the entire uh, collection of Studio Ghibli films to uh, Netflix. And one that I uh, watched fairly recently uh, for the first time was Hell's Moving Castle. Um, it's not a perfect movie by any means. Some of like the... Uh, character writing is a little wonky and some things don't really make a lot of sense however in terms of like animation world building uh even voice acting like uh anime kind of gets uh, like a lot of bad rap because sometimes the english casts don't do a very good job of representing um uh the actual dialogue of the spoken word but uh, specifically even for uh, a lot of Ghibli movies, not all, but even, you know, Spirited Away, uh, Totoro, and Howl's Moving Cast, in this case, the English cast are very well uh, spoken. Um, some of the actors in this are some of my favorite actors that I didn't even realize that they were in this uh, until I did further research, but it has, like, a, a really interesting, bizarre story. Uh some incredible animation. Some of the greatest animation you'll ever see combines both 2D uh, and 3D. It's kind of hard to summarize the story because there's a whole lot of it that happens, but I think it's just very entertaining even from a non-story-driven uh, perspective. And if I had to give a rating, it would be like a 7 or an 8, but that's my opinion on Hell's Moving Castle for that one. Um, if you were looking for something a little bit more dramatic and realistic and a bit more hard uh, hitting. Uh, one of my favorite films of last year, which is uh, a Netflix original movie that I was fortunate enough to see in the theater before it went directly to Netflix, uh, was Marriage Story, written and directed by Noah Baumbach, uh, featuring two of the best performances of last year uh, from Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver, who give very genuine, real performances. Uh, now, that if you, for those who aren't aware, uh, without trying to give away too much about the film, uh, the title Marriage Story is supposed to be kind of ironic because the whole film's actually about a divorce and the uh, legal ramifications that kind of uh, come around with that. Uh, that's sort of told from uh, Ray Liotta um, and Laura Dern's perspective. Uh, it's got like a lot of really hard, dramatic scenes in it. Uh, specifically, the one thing that a lot of people talk about and repost uh, is the argument scene at the very end, which is probably one of the most hard-hitting, saddest, uh, crushing scenes I've seen in a long time. And it it's not 
a film for everyone, but it's got also a lot of other things to it as well. It's not just dramatic stuff. There's also honestly a lot of really funny things in it as well. There's a lot of really funny scenes and moments. Um, and like even different variations of comedy. There's like uplifting, but then there's even like some really, uh, there's some dark humor in there as well that is really effective. And one of the best screenplays for sure of last year. Yeah. And the last one that I wanted to recommend that you can. Oh, hang on, hang on. Yeah, slow it down. Just slow yeah. down, Jack. We need a rating for uh, that last film there. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, that one I would have to give uh, probably an eight or a nine out of ten. That's somewhere in that area, but definitely a, a high recommendation for me, especially if you like uh, quirky indie stuff. Go ahead, Mitchell. Um, I have a. I first, I really love Marriage Story as well, and I first watched that um, when I was at my grandparents' house, uh, probably just after New Year's, and um, it has some coarse language in there, and my grandpa wasn't too much of a fan of that, <laughs> so um, so they get to the character would curse and and he would go like. Oh, not sure they need to use that language. And then he'd get up and move into the other room and then have the cricket on on full blast. And I'm just like, I'm still trying to watch a movie here. And it was just so funny. And he, it's like, we kind of asked him about it. It's just like, did you need to make a comment and go make a cup of tea and watch a cricket each time? And it's just like, oh, it was just because I didn't really enjoy the film. It's like, that's fine. Just don't make up this whole thing that you're offended by. Like, you had a big deal out of it, but it was funny regardless. Yeah, see, it's it's and frustrating. Jack, what else? I was gonna quickly add this, by the way, because yeah. uh, our living room is right next to the kitchen, and my dad complains a lot of the time when he's like watching the football or the TV or whatever. When someone walks past and they're like making a noise or something, and then like he can't focus on it, it's fine, but uh, it's very hypocritical because whenever we're trying to watch something and he's like up at midnight trying to get string cheese out of the fridge, he gets like 500 different <laughs> things. And, and it's so loud. It's like trying he's to He's making watch... a five course meal. <laughs> exactly. It's incredibly frustrating. Anyway, uh, the final film I wanted to recommend uh, is a film by one of my absolute favorite filmmakers, uh, Martin Scorsese. And that was the Irishman. It is uh, perfect for a time to watch it uh, because it's, nearly four hours long so you have plenty of time to watch it it's essentially a mini series <laughs> as a film <laughs> but it is uh it feels like you're watching a, a modern day classic uh it span the film itself uh, in the um, within the actual narrative of the film spans decades upon decades finishing up uh like starting in like the i believe like the 1930s or 1940s and ending like right about uh the early 2000s and it has some of the some of the all time greatest actors in it. You've got Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, Al Pacino, Harvey Keitel, amongst others, who all give incredible performances. Uh, the direction from Martin Scorsese. I mean, the guy's made some of the greatest films ever. Uh, unsurprisingly, his directing is still stand out. And uh, uh, with a lot of directors that you know definitely peaked all in the seventies and eighties, some of them have kind of you know kind of lost a lot of their touch like uh, Brian De Palma or your Francis Ford Coppola. Martin Scorsese is one of the few gems that have still been making fantastic films like spanning decades upon decades um, and the guy never really lost his touch and even in his uh, elderly age now his fil films like The Irishman feel very self-reflective that it's a film like that it uh, touches a lot about you know losing your friends and your family and those last couple of minutes are even for a film revolving around a lot of the themes that it does, are feel so eerie and creepy, um, and it's it, it'll stick with you. There are lots of uh, moments that are some of like the most uh, thought provoking uh, that I think have been come out of like the past few recent years of cinema. Uh, now I will say this: uh, I did also get to see this one in the cinema, which I was very fortunate for, meaning I couldn't pause, I couldn't like go up to do anything, and. <laughs> That's that's definitely a bit of a hard one uh, when you're watching a three and a half hour long movie. Uh, but I did say that. But I did think about this. I probably should not have seen a seven thirty session because <laughs> when it was getting towards oh, the end, <laughs> it's not that the film was boring or anything. I far from it. I was like almost always engaged, but I was getting so tired at the end that I had to just keep like waking myself up to just keep going. But I do not recommend starting it at like seven. Start watching it at like, you know, more towards the noon after, you know, even after you're done with your classes, if you want to take that suggestion. Uh, but yeah, that was a great movie. That would also probably be like an eight or nine out of 10 for me. I think it's definitely one of the best films of the last few years. 
and that's a high recommendation. All right. Well, it's sounding uh, there's some good recommendations to get you through this weekend. So, uh, Jack, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. We uh, we might have you back uh, later on if uh, we're still in isolation, but we really appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Yeah, Thanks. no problem. Thanks, uh, Jack. Yes, see you guys later. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye. There he goes. Um, and obviously, uh, Jack was running uh, some sort of uh, 1985 internet at his house as well there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to mention it, but it, 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 it wasn't the greatest. Uh -oh. it, it, certainly, it wasn't great, but it, it sort of helped people guess at home how long Jack's hair is, of course, as well. Yeah, it did. That's, that's, that's today's... Uh, this, this episode's question, how long is Jack's <laughs> hair in that regard? Now, we haven't got a name for our podcast yet, and our plan was to do a few this year and speak to some of the big names at Loyola College. So if you've got an idea for uh, what we should call the podcast, maybe something uh, St. Ignatius, uh, an Ignatian term maybe, or something to do with Loyola or Watsonia or school, pop it in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. And and if this anyone's a... got any – yeah, well, if anyone else has got uh, any ideas as well for uh, what they would like to see in the podcast, certainly. Yeah, uh, suggestions, that. guests, things. Yeah, we, yeah, we can certainly do that. Hey, uh, Mitch, it's been a pleasure. Have you got any plans for the weekend? I mean, you can't do much, but uh, have you got anything in mind? Um – Trying to catch up on the rest of the office that I'm finishing that. I'm at season five now, and uh, I do have my only work shift for the week on Sunday. Oh, is your work is still going. Yes, yes, I'm I'm at Kmart. It's, uh, it's yeah. an essential service. Yes. All the people coming in. Is it, is it quieter? Shops. Is it quieter than normal? It is. It is actually ridiculous. Like the amount of people that are still in there. We had lines going, you know how the Kmart one at Greensboro is like in the middle of the store and then yeah. goes up a little bit. We had the line last time I worked there, we had the line going all the way back to the bike section. Like that's wow. just so many wow. people. Um, yeah, no, it, is a, it is a bit interesting, isn't it? You can't come to school, but you can still go to the shopping centre. Um, exactly. All right, well, hey, we'll do this. I get paid. Yeah, that's it. And that's yeah. really important. And, and a bit of a shout out, I guess, to all those people watching here. For the students at home, we hope you are looking after yourself uh, mentally and physically. As Mitch said at the start, make sure you're getting out there for a bit of a walk. Um, and you know, to all our families who may be uh, dealing with sort of financial struggles at the moment, they may have lost their job or reduced hours. We uh, we certainly, the loyal community are thinking of all our, our friends and family. And um, we're hoping these podcasts and some other things we're going to put up on social media uh, in the next few weeks keep everyone uh, a little bit entertained, a little bit happy. But we are thinking about you all and can't wait to have you back here on campus. Uh, Mitch, pleasure to be with you again. Well, pleasure to be with you, sir. This has been an honour. <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, catch everyone soon on our next podcast. Thanks for joining us. All right. Bye. See Thank ya. you. Bye.